important part of my life. And uh, alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic. I finally, finally, at the age of 43, I went to AA. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been, on May the 27th, will be 40 years. Wow. I'm sober. Wow. So I haven't had a drink since still, still, still 39 years. But in a couple of months, it'll be 40 years. No alcohol. And uh, by being, uh, you know, being able to think for the first time in many years, you know, I started I started living a normal life. And uh, I finally got to that state where there is no hate. I mean, I hate the Germans. I, at one time I did. But, you know, I let go of the hate and... Uh, I don't hate anybody at all. And I just live a very, try to live a very, very peaceful life without any aggravation. And basically, that's my story. Now, you can really hear it because I was skipping around. You have to listen to my testimony. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if you had a chance to listen to it. I did. I did. Yeah. Okay. And and you can pick up some stuff from there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I read your, I, I watched, it was a video, and uh, yeah, I, I saw the part where you uh, went into the army and you wanted to go to uh, Korea, right? Was it Korea? I wanted to go to Korea, right. Korea. Germany, yeah. You, no. you begged them to send you to Korea, but they yeah. sent you to Germany. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Was I you, well, you said it was hard, well, very hard to go back. Because very hard, they were sending me back to Germany. I mean, after all, what happened to me in Germany, you know, it was horrible. It's been, there aren't any words that can, uh, there aren't any words in any language that can describe or say what these places were like. Mm-hmm. You know, the way the way that people were treated, like it was in Robin's Brick, where the women were being experimented on. Now, of course, I didn't know it at that time, but I used to pass that building every day. And I used to hear the woman screaming and yelling, and they would experiment on them. And then the ones that died, one of my, one, an aunt of mine was taken in for experiments. So I, I didn't know it when she was taken away, but that's where they took her. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, there was a lot of anger. Yeah. You know, and so I said, let me go to Korea. And uh, they sent me back to Germany. It was very, very hard for me. But, you know, you, you can't go, you can't walk around your life being angry and hateful. You know, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So um, I had to surrender, and I did. And today, I, I don't hate anybody. You know? I have no, there is no hate in my heart. Um, you have to forgive, you know. You can't forget, but you have to forget. You have to go on with your life. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah, because if you don't forgive, you give the enemies the power, you know. That's right, you know. So, I mean, you know, was I angry? But, you know, of course, I was, I was uh, crazy, especially when I drank. Mm-hmm. And um, I was very lucky that I had a wonderful wife and she stuck by me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and AA was, well, saved my life. Because working the steps of the program, you know, you work through all of the, all these things that happen to you, and you, know, you just have to let go of all that rage and hate that you had. And today, I don't hate them. I don't hate anybody. Um, in fact, I like to go to Germany. I was supposed to be in Germany this year and last year mm-hmm. uh, because of the anniversary of the uh, liberation of the camps. Yeah. And um, I was there years ago, and I spoke to they brought kids in. And I spoke to them, and I shared with them in Robinsbrick what it was like for me being there. And then I spoke at the university in uh, Robinsbrick, not to the whole university, just a class of maybe two classes, or maybe a couple of hundred kids. Not kids, there were university 18, 19, 20, 20-year-olds, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's it, really. Of course, I left a lot of stuff out. But I figured that by you listening to the uh, testimony, you can pick up some of that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you And I found this very interesting. Uh, you told me it wasn't just the Jewish people that were sent to labor camps. It was gypsies, Christians, 
Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, I mean, it, uh, if you if you did not conform to Hitler or the Nazi or whatever they wanted, there were Christians, there were Catholic. Ravensbrück was a very unusual camp. It was a woman's camp, so you had women there from uh, Sweden, from Norway, from Poland, from Germany, from Austria. I mean, from all over Europe. Mm-hmm. All over Europe, and one was Japanese who was caught up accidentally in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and why they sent me, oh, I forgot to mention this, why they sent me to, to Zexenhausen, because they had a gas chamber. Mm-hmm. And they sent the kids that were going to, they were going to murder us. So I don't know what happened to the other kids because we all got separated. I was in this one building and I was very lucky that I was in the right, the right time at the right place. You know, that's what it is. So it was meant for me to be in that building. Otherwise, I would have landed up in the, in, in the chamber. Mm-hmm. So that's why they sent the kids there. They come to, to, you know, they were going to murder us. So, um. Yeah. Did a lot of your family survive the Holocaust? You mentioned your father survived. You mentioned well, my father said only six of us survived. Six of us came out of there. Oh my! Yeah. Uh, only six. The rest of the family, I have no idea who they were. They were cousins, distant cousins. Uh, because my one aunt lived in Israel. My other uncle lived in uh, in, uh, in England. So. Uh, on that side, I, I, I really don't know. I, you know, when we were living in Lodge, mm-hmm. we never, I never got to see the family. I was never allowed to go out of the house unless my father took me out. I didn't play with children. I didn't know any, I didn't know anybody. All I knew are the people in the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a very unusual upbringing, but that's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. Did you reconnect with your father after the war? Did you? Oh, sure, of course. Yeah, well, yeah, after the war. Uh, when I, you know, in Poland. We were still in Poland. And when Poland, he came in. And then he, he went looking for the box. He found the jewelry. And then he bribed the Russian officers to smuggle us out of Poland back into Germany. Mm-hmm. And then we got separated again in 1947 when I went to England. And then I saw him again in 1952. When I came to the States. Mm-hmm. What part of the States did you, what state? New York, New York. New York. Okay. New York. And then I lived in Philadelphia and uh, now I'm in Florida. Yeah. Then I lived in Ohio, you know, all, you know, selling insurance here, insurance here. It's a very unusual story. It's a story of survival. It's a story of uh, forgiveness. It's just, uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the story of alcoholism. Mm-hmm. How that affects your life and affected everything. Your thinking. You know, and finally, when I was able to get it, started thinking. You know, they call stinking thinking. Mm-hmm. When you're drinking, it's stinking thinking. And my thinking isn't stinking anymore yeah but uh so uh, that's it I you know so I was just thinking you know, if you listen to the testimony you can pick up stuff now let me tell you about the testimony the testimony belongs to Yad Vashem mm-hmm. Yad Vashem is the Holocaust Museum in Israel mm-hmm. so you can you can share it with people but you can't copy any of the wording the, you know and use it in your writings because the, the, the writings belong to them. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll share the video with the interview because that's where I got some of my uh, questions, you know, yeah. based yeah. on it. And, but, uh, you, but you can share the video with anybody that you want. And you can share my other picture, the one that um, the one that's uh, at the, the American Embassy in, in Berlin, that one picture of me, and then when you open it up, now, the, the, the picture of me that you see there, that was from Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was taken in Germany. But the pictures inside were also in Germany at the DP camp. The DP camp was a the displaced persons camp. Mm-hmm. And I was there with my father. You can see that outfit that I was wearing. It's like from the, from the hunger. Yeah. But that's what they, that's, that's what they gave us. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very horrible what happened. The Holocaust was something very, you know, words can't describe what that was. Yeah. And we, it was yeah. And we must Humble. not forget it, and uh, we can't let that be repeated, most importantly. No, 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 no. I, I don't think it's, well, listen, anything is possible. Anything can be repeated, but... Uh, it would be horrible. I mean, it's, but you know something, it's you know, 78 years and uh, we haven't learned anything because people are still killing each other. And, uh, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. There's still anti-Semitism and racism. It's just hate. Uh, it's sad we haven't learned a thing really from what happened those many years ago. You know, I know. Like uh, the hatred still lives, and the kid, they, it's, uh, it's mind boggling. It is mind boggling. I don't know how it's in Mississippi, but um, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, there's hate everywhere, you know. No. Every, yeah. Everywhere they hate, hate, hate. It's not good. It's not good. And what's happening now in our country is just horrible, horrible with everything. Let's talk about, because you go to different places and speak about, you share your testimony and speak about the Holocaust. You, you've you uh, done it at universities, colleges, churches, synagogues. Yeah, yeah. Are you still doing that? Or I know with the pandemic. Well, no, right now we're not doing anything at all because mm -hmm. of what's going on, you know, the uh, COVID. Yeah. And, um I, I hope, uh, I mean, I have my thyroid, so that interferes with my speaking. But if somebody wants me to come off to speak, I would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, and then when I speak, it's uh, every time it's different. It's, I mean, it's not, I can't remember the words. It's all from memory. Yeah. It's like something that I uh, uh, have on a piece of paper. So my, uh, my, my talks are different every time, but, but the... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my, my talks are the same, but the, I'm just using different words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, life goes on. Yeah. Yeah, you have to make life go on. You have to have faith, have the faith, uh, and just yeah. have hope. You know, so it's... Um, <laughs> It's just some days it's hard because, um, you know, you start the, or you start thinking and, uh, you know, what can I tell you? It's like, um, you start thinking about all these things about the camps and the, even though the, I've been out of there since I've been six years old, I have, I have not forgotten. Yeah. I, I can't, no, no matter how hard I try. It just doesn't go away. Yeah, do um, a lot of things in life nowadays remind you back to those days? Like, do... Well, not really. There's, there's, there aren't any words what, uh, you know, what happened uh, in the camps. There's, you know, I, I see what's going on in the rest of the world, but uh, no, not really. I mean, no. Okay. I mean, I live in the United States. I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. I know I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had a, a normal as life you could have after the war. Yeah. You know? And um, I'm very blessed to have talked to you. And. Uh, well, uh, what uh, okay? So what are you going to do? You're going to listen to all that stuff and then. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I uh, I listened to the testimony. Uh, okay. But I really can't because we're only a thirty minute show. You know, I can't really fit all of that into. No, it's very hard. Wouldn't you be better off just sending uh, the picture? Yeah, I'll uh, when I upload this interview, your interview will be uploaded on Monday, sometime Monday, and okay. with that, I'll uh, share the testimony video, 
and the pictures you sent me.